The Last of Us Part 2 is only a couple of months old, and already the magicians behind Naughty Dog's latest and greatest mushroom zombie game are lobbing development insights at us from all angles like an angry wisdom-dispensing bloater. A friend of mine specifically requested that I explain how this little trick works, posted by Matthew Trevelyan Johns on ArtStation, where vehicles submerged in water have a wet, mouldy rust material blended in, where they meet the water plane. A cheap answer to this would be to get the world Y position of a pixel and use that to blend from one material to the other. But as we can see in the video demo, this is not what's happening here. As the water plane can be rotated arbitrarily, and the effect still works. While I can't be 100% certain how this is being done, as Matthew never goes into any shader-specific detail, I know that we can achieve something very similar using a point-to-plane calculation. This is the signed distance function of a plane, which is to say that it's an equation that, given a point in space, p, will return the distance between that point and the plane. In this case, the plane is defined by two components, the normal of the plane and h, which is the distance of the plane from the origin along its normal. So all we need to do to find the shortest distance between p and our plane is to get the dot product of p and the normal of the plane, n, and finally subtract h, the plane's distance from the origin. Let's start with a simple shader implementation of our distance function. First, I've defined two uniforms for our plane's normal and distance from origin. Next, let's get the world position of the pixel we're shading, which can be done by multiplying the clip space pixel position, here called vertex, by the camera matrix. Then we can implement our distance function from earlier, by getting the dot product of p and the normal of our plane, subtracting the distance from the origin. Finally, I'm outputting the result to the albedo channel, so that we can see what's going on. Using the abs function to flip any negative results, for pixels behind the plane, to positive ones. And here's the result. You can see how the plane rotates as you alter the normal and moves forwards and backwards when changing the value of h. We can also try returning a different colour if our distance is positive or negative, so now we can easily see which pixels are in front of the plane and which ones are behind it. We could start fleshing out our shader now, adding textures and blending between them, but we're not quite done yet. Setting up the plane at the moment is fiddly, and not at all like the one-click solution we see Naughty Dog using. So to make this a bit more usable, we'll need another object to act as our water plane. I'm also going to add a script to our test capsule with a couple of new variables, one for plugging in the reference object, which will be our plane, and the other is just a boolean that we'll use as a crude refresh button to update our shader if the plane moves. In the setter for our refresh button, let's grab the plane's normal and position like this. h, the plane's distance from the origin, is then calculated simply as the dot product of the plane's normal and position. This might not make intuitive sense if you're not familiar with dot products, so let's quickly cover why this works. Let's say we have two unit vectors, a and b. The dot product of a and b will be a scalar between negative 1 and positive 1, but what does this value actually represent? Well, imagine creating a right-angled triangle by projecting a onto b, adding an additional edge that's perpendicular to b. The result of the dot product is actually the length of this segment of B, that terminates where it meets the new perpendicular edge. This can also be seen as a measurement of how similar the two vectors are. Since the closer A comes to B, the longer this edge of our triangle becomes, reducing to zero at the perpendicular, and moving into negative values past there. This also works for our use case of using one unit vector, the plane's normal, and a non-unit vector, the plane's position. So long as one of the vectors in the dot product is of length 1, the result will be the distance you'd have to travel along that vector to be perpendicular to the end of the other vector. This is exactly the same principle that makes our plane's distance function work. For more information about dot products, point-to-plane calculations, and the general magical nature of triangles, check the links in the description. Okay, back to our implementation. We've already done all the hard work, so let's add another couple of lines for setting our shader parameters, plug our reference object in, and hit refresh. Now this is far more usable. We can move our object around any way we like, hit refresh, and the plane definition is immediately updated. All that's left to do is polish our shader. 
Let's start by throwing in some texture inputs and samplers for the albedo and normal maps. For this example, I've packed the roughness into the alpha of the albedo texture. Then we simply mix our textures at the output, using the distance to the plane as the alpha. Let's also add some handy variables to offset the blend position and control the size of the transition, and clamp the final result between 0 and 1. Alright, looks cool, but the blend is a bit rubbish. So let's fix that with a new texture input for a transition mask, which will be overlaid on top of the distance value to break up the transition, so the textures blend in a more natural way. Here's the function for doing the overlay. It's basically an overlay blend mode like you'd find in Photoshop or something. Now that looks much better. Let's also throw together a quick water shader behind the scenes, and there we go, we're done! We've got all the functionality from the example, except for this extra moss layer for very deep water, but if you've been paying attention, that should be very straightforward to implement if you want it. Of course, this point-to-plane equation can be used for more than just texture blending. Here's an example where I'm using the exact same maths to create a portal effect by hiding pixels depending on which side of a plane they're on. As always, the project files for this video are available on my Patreon page, linked in the description, along with references and further reading. If you're into this technical art stuff, which I imagine you are if you've made it this far into the video, maybe consider liking, subscribing, and checking out my other videos. And finally, thank you very much for watching.